the kings who are gone Jenny would dance with her ghost The ones she had lost and the ones she had found And the ones who had loved her the most Hello dear viewers Today's Skyrim build is the Poltergeist, a character I wanted to publish last Halloween, but uh, stuff happened. Life got in the way. She is a former exorcist of RK who helped people by cleansing haunted houses, but there was this one place that broke her. The ghosts possessed her, and now she is the hunting. Wherever she goes, angry ghosts follow, objects start flying, people turn suddenly violent or crushed with dread, and corpses start walking. Gameplay wise, she is an illusion mage, puppet master extraordinaire, a necromancer and a telekinetic prodigy. She uses a set of cool and spooky combos, she disarms, incapacitates and hurls people around, all while remaining unseen and even downright invisible. And she can master a veritable army of ghosts. This video is also very educational. It shows you why red meat is bad for you, why alcohol is bad for you and why herd mentality is bad. For you. We are going to need a few mods. Vokri is needed for the telekinetic perks, so you can kill people by throwing objects at them or even throwing them from a high place. Also, all the illusion perks, for example Terror, which makes people you hit with a fear spell drop their weapons. Very useful if there is no clutter around to hurl at them with telekinesis. Also, also with the Odin Vokri patch we will also get some cool perks supporting the command spells, the Death Howl, Dirge and all sound based spells that Odin in introduces will be our only way of dealing direct damage. Well, it's not exactly damage, it's a temporary non-stackable penalty to HP, but it can still take down enemies when timed properly. Your minions, thralls and ghosts will take their sweet time defeating enemies, so a well-timed dirge spell can finish a fight much faster if a group of your enemies is already a little bit weakened. Summer Mist is really required mainly for the Amplify Illusion enchantments, I can't really play without my Amplify enchantments anymore. Andromeda is here for its amazing ritual stone, allowing you to have a fresh batch of ghosts at your side almost at all times. With one Vokri sneak perk you can refresh your ghost squad almost at will, because you can leave and re-enter combat almost at will, and entering combat is the point at which ghosts of people who died near you since the previous combat are spawned to join your side. Finally, Modular Clothing System has a hood, it's a Fallen Knight hood, which looks great with vanilla rugs. Now for the race we need cliche Breton, because as it often happens to me, I had no item slots free to use any magic resistance or elemental resistance, and also we need tons of magicka, so absorbing it from spells is a good idea. The attribute spread is 4 of magicka per 3 of health. You could go for simple 50-50 spread too, but again with 2 master level spells being used somewhat frequently, and no fortify magic skill enchantments, 4 per 3 seemed a bit more adequate, and the stone is the rich its functionality in Andromeda has been described already. Unlocking the Requiem, daily power the stone can grant you after discovering all the standing stones, can be quite helpful in boss fights. The main skills are Illusion, Alteration, Conjuration, Sneak and Enchanting. A disgusting amount of perks is needed in Illusion. Dual casting will become a little bit redundant with high level Amplify Illusion and Odin mechanics, but only in the very late game with the build wrapped up, so I would still take it for the mid game when your mid tier mind affecting spells will still fail at times. Terror disarms everyone affected by fear spells, Iron Maiden makes the targets affected by fury spells take damage whenever they attack, which can help you make the fights quicker. Mind Thrall is going to be a great help, it makes one person affected by a command spell follow you and fight for you permanently, well at least until dead or released, and you can give them some super gear too. Spirit of War perk will summon ghostly manifestations of your allies affected by a rally spell, so potentially 
PvE, your mind troll, people affected by your command spells, and two raised undead. All that combines neatly with the Shadow Legion or Simulacrum spells, which will summon ghostly manifestations of your enemies. Also, the spirits summoned via the Ritual Stone are also affected by the Spirit of War, meaning you can double the amount of ghosts with a single rally spell. You will never run out of ghosts. Obviously, we also need all ranks of Animage and Master of the Mind. We can definitely possess some Dwemer machines and corpses. Uh, we can possess anything. Late game, you will be able to do all this terrifying crowd control while being completely beyond detection due to the Master spell of Shadow Weave, which is a sort of permanent invisibility, re-enabling itself after a split second. Unfortunately, the blur perk was completely changed in the recent Valkyrie update, and now I can't take the perk that gave me the idea for this build in the first place. Never mind, I can still make it cool, and eh? You... Mm -hmm. Now, in alteration, we need all the ranks of mage armor, all in magic resistance, all telekinetic perks because we are a poltergeist, and objects start doing weird stuff in haunted places, Atronach to pair up with our racial power, Okato's preparation to never waste magicka on armor spells, sorcerer's robes to improve all your spells, and two ranks of alter self, first for extra magicka, second for shock and cold resistance. Fire resistance would be better, but I made a pure roleplay choice. Fire should be scary for such vile creature as this one, I thought. I would even become a vampire for it, but it would replace my creepy black as night eyes with creepy glowing eyes. That's not really my kind of creepy. In Conjuration, we require the entire necromancy branch and twin souls. Necromaster is a cool perk too, buffing your undead thralls and dread zombies and giving you an option to customize their weapons, but since it would make me go one level beyond 50, I marked it optional. We will still need some summons early in the game, like Gloom Wraith from Odin or the Dawn Guard undead summons, but since Walking Dead are more customizable and we can do some cool enchanting with this character, Necromancy seemed more in character and stronger. In the sneak tree, our main goal is escape artist, but since it is a 100 perk, let's take a detour for the fog of war and lightfoot on our way there. Escape artist will unlock one key combo that I already mentioned. The perk allows you to end combat upon sneaking. The ghost spawned thanks to the ritual stone appear at the start of each combat, so whenever you feel like there isn't enough ghosts around you, just sneak and then unsneak and bam! more ghosts. Cast a rally spell on them, wabam, double the ghosts. This will be made even easier with the Shadow Weave spell granting you an almost unbreakable invisibility, meaning the enemies will prioritize you very rarely, so you can just enjoy the carnage and stay away. If someone does bother you directly, just hurl them away with dual cast telekinesis. Finally, in enchanting tag, these perks here, there is not much call for the extra effect. It's the single most popular cheese in the world! No, no, really! You don't really need extra effect and uh, you don't really need to hurry with the skill. Some generic fortify magic and illusion items should be uh, quite enough early on. However, at some point you will need to get some enchanters elixirs and max out your gear. Here is your final list of enchantments. Fortify magicka on hoods and gloves, fortify sneak on the foot wraps, amplify illusion on the tunic, siphon magicka on the necklace and influence fear on the ring. Influence fear is the absolutely essential enchantment both for roleplay and gameplay. Naturally, making a random enemy panic and run is suitable for a go ghost mistress like this. It also provides you yet another protection against direct combat, a very nice since we can't really build up any decent armor rating. There have been times when this effect kicked in just in time to this way a bandit marauder from charging at me. Siphon magicka can be replaced with regenerate magicka. Well, actually it would probably be a better idea considering the enemies won't stay close to you for long. But this is more in character, damn it. I'm sticking with it, it's darker. It's it's, it's, you know, you know, you're stealing energy from them and that, that suits better. I'm, I'm sticking with it. Buzz off. 
And here is the list of spells, most of which has already been mentioned and their respective combos are described in the skill section, but I have neglected to mention the immensely useful master spell of the news media, <coughs> sorry, propaganda. This one is wonderful because it puts everyone around you under your control, making them follow you and fight for you. And you can of course double their numbers with the rally spell and spirit of the war perk. Just imagine taking an entire dungeon full of enemies with you to pay a visit to the local bandit boss or master necromancer. Yeah, let those bastards taste their own f f medicine. I don't like necromancers. Those of your newly acquired friends that will die on the way can rejoin your team in more ways than one, their body will keep on fighting and their spirit will appear on the battlefield when the next combat starts. Remember as well about two key shouts, become ethereal for obvious roleplay and practical reasons, as well as slow time, as it is much easier to target your enemies with objects hurled with telekinesis when you are in the slow time mode. So let's sound this bad girl up. She manipulates everyone, she is an undefeated puppet master, causing outbursts of aggression and panic without being seen. She summons ghosts and ghostly doppelgangers in three different ways, easily overcrowding your screen. She manipulates objects and creatures remotely by throwing them around, she can infiltrate dungeons without being detected, but causing fear and despair and things flying and she has a very particular approach to fashion and she never wanted to leave never wanted to who uh, sorry that bloody song has played in my head for far too long that's it for today hope you will have fun with this one remember to leave a like subscribe and ring the bell if you want to live and we will see each other again bye bye Jugglers and singers require applause. You are a gamer!